Hello, and welcome to this week's Rod and Pollocks. I'm Mick, I'm Tom, and uh, this week's episode is brought to you by the good folk at Solon Seagoo and Sakuma Fishing. We're doing sponsored videos, folks. We're getting there. Can you believe it? I know. Two, two idiots from the Northeast doing sponsored videos. Uh, so this week we're going to be testing out Solon Seagoo. Uh, conditions are actually all right. We're down on Seaton Sluice Beach. Uh, Beach. What? Blythe Beach. Is this Blythe Beach still? I don't know if this is Blythe or Sluice. It's smack bang in the middle, really, okay. isn't it? We're in Seaton Blythe. We're in the middle <laughs> bogs. We're, we're in the middle bogs. The middle smack, smack bang in the middle between Seaton and Blythe. Uh, so we're going to give this Seagoo a damn good test now. Tom's probably going to talk a little bit about hoops. I've used these for years anyway, which makes it even better that they've started sponsoring them. Uh, we have an F35. I don't know if you're going to get this on camera, but that is awesome. F35 fighter jet passing over. That's right. So I'm literally I'm going to leave the camera rolling. I'm going to speed up and get all set up. Yeah. set up on there, smack in the middle of Sluice and Blythe there. You can't really see it very well on the camera, it's just after low tide at the minute. But behind me there's an area where there's not many breakers. There. As the tide comes in that's a hole so we need to try and cast into that. So from the high tide point it's probably about a 50 yard chuck and that should hold fish. Everything will congregate in there bait wise and that's where the fish will come to take it, in theory. Not a very big swell, so we might not get very much, but he has open. Uh, right, folks. So the rig I'm using today, as usual, uh, standard pulley panel. I've got a five ounce grip lead on, a uh, 50 pound rig body, 30 pound amnesia hook snood, the usual circle hook panel, and then a lovely Sakuma Manta 5.0. I've got quite a big hook on for now, because this beach can be a bit of a bass hot spot every now and then and everybody knows I've never caught a bass yet so I'm going to try a bigger hook um, a nice worm bait and I'll probably inject it with a bit of air solid sea goo but I'll show you how we do that when I start fishing some bigger baits this and um, we've got crab flavor lug flavor mackerel flavor uh, and ragworm flavor no cheese and onion which kind of disappointed me a little bit uh, we well, haven't decided which one we're going to use yet flavors michael you're not eating them well you are if i if you catch the biggest fish blanca eats the mackerel one blanca eats the mackerel one i'm sure it's not for human consumption like don't eat it seriously don't eat it um, the Mediterranean mackerel marinade. It sound, <laughs> it sounds, it sounds, it sounds quite nice, doesn't it? Yeah. But this stuff, it's uh, packed with hormones and stuff like that, and it's designed to attract the fish in and can trigger them into a feeding frenzy. I've already read up a little bit about it. Yeah, I had it all memorised, and I've been rehearsing this <laughs> every night since I got it. But guess what? Mine's gone blank again. What you can do is you can dip it on your bait, um, or you can buy the syringe off them, which we've got. 
living and blithe and carrying a syringe in your tackle box is never the best thing really. But hey, uh, oh, I've got some lovely lug worm here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject it with a syringe into the bait, belt it out, and apparently it seeps out for up to 30 minutes. So it gives an extra 10 minutes per bait, hopefully. But we're going to give it a fair test. Conditions aren't great, so we're not going to go well. This brings in the most fish. We're going to see if it just increases the fish activity, even if it just knocks bites. We're going to see how much difference it actually makes. So I'm going to get baited up. I'm going to stuff some of this in a syringe and get it into my bait. syringe here just gonna suck some of this lovely goo up hopefully oh that's thick see nice to see nice thick liquid coming in we're not gonna use too much i would say i don't know enough really about this i'm telling a blithe lad i've just got this in my blood haven't i obviously we're a little bit we're only gonna put a little bit in each bit to start with and then see how it works from there god it stinks so it must be good. Right, so that's me, got my first bait in the water. Uh, pretty much from the intro to this point now, I will time lapse apart from the parts where we're talking. But for now, we're going back to the usual update system. That was me just trying something new out for this episode. And if I like the look of it in the edit, this is how we'll film from now on. But yeah, I've got baits out. You can see in the background, it's there. Tom's just about to get his second bait out. Both were, uh, it's just lug worms injected with uh, solid sea goo lug flavour. I keep getting wrong with them for calling them flavours. Uh, scent, lug scent, there we go, that's better. Uh, so we're going to see how this stuff actually works. Hopefully, it might help drag in a few extra fish. Right. The fishing's quite hard going here because we've yet to have a colossal tide pull here. Like nothing we've ever seen before really, is it? We're casting into what looks like a gully on the beach, but there seems to be a, like a, a riptide going through it. So we're casting out and within a minute or so, we're about 50 metres to the right of where we are first cast. And it is a nightmare! I've had one bite so far on the one time that I managed to not be all the way over there. But now I'm back to being all the way over there again. So. We'll give this a little bit longer and see how it plays out. Yeah, we're hoping as the tide lifts and the gully gets a bit deeper, the flow of water through it. Airplane. Should. Airplane. Should, uh, should calm down a little bit. Hopefully, fingers crossed. If not, God knows what we're going to do. Might have to move. I don't want to hit the pier. We're close enough to just hop in the car and get to the pier. But I really don't want to fish the pier because reports lately are saying that it is chock a block all the time. But. We'll see what happens. It's Tom getting a nice photo of, a, of an aeroplane. We're right on the flight path here, so we're getting loads of planes over with. Right, so we've moved about, what, 100 metres down the beach? Uh, Tom's just been pulled a little bit. I haven't been pulled so far, so fingers crossed we might have found a sweet spot here and Tom's just got unlucky. But currently at the moment, we are going to set the fish activities metre at zero. There's zero fish activity that will be flashing along the bottom of the screen right now. Um, I have checked my little fish activity predictor on the internet and it, it was six fish high at seven o'clock so we might, we might get something, you never know, we'll see what happens. But at the moment we're just going to keep cracking on and keep pumping sea goo into our baits. Right ladies and gentle fish, bear with us because I am literally recording this upside down because I've got the camera pointing down. In my bait bucket of the day, mixed big bait bucket, we have some lovely lug worm. You can see them there. So I'm trying to do it with my head torch as well. Uh, usual chopping board. Uh, some bluey. Some nice bluey there. Uh, bag of ragworm. Squid, 
always take squid with me. And there's a little treat for ourselves this week, we've also got some razor clams. Now, I'm going to try and pump one of these full of the crab sea goo, probably with a bit of squid. Um, normally I would do it on my hook, but I'll try and do it on camera here for you. If these are defrosted enough to use now anyway. I'll just crack that shell off. Oh. I'm only going to use the foot on this one, I'll put that gunky bit. With it still being frozen, that's quite a bit of a pain in the arse. But we're only going to use half of that. And I know I've got a bit of squid in here that I've already started using. Ugh. Take the heat off. A nice bit of squid. I'm gonna, I hope you can see my hands here, I'm just going to wrap that over. Go through my pocket till I find me lucky bit of elastic. I know I've got it in here somewhere. There she is. Get me bit of elastic, I'm just gonna bind that up. Not mummify it as usual, you know. Just give it a nice binding. Now I'm going to try and do this in one continuous shot, but I might have to cut. Uh, I must go in my box and get out the wonder stuff. Strange. And you can see there, crab flavour, or crab scent. Tom tells us off when I call it flavour. Just going to draw a bit of that into the syringe. Sorry, this is all off camera and you're look, just looking at my bait. A little bit more than that. With it being so viscous, it's quite hard to draw into the syringe. Get that back in my box. Now, let us say I would normally do this on the hook, but I'm just going to jab that in. Give it a little squirt. Go in somewhere else. Squirt a bit at the bottom, give it a little squirt. And you see that stuff's oozing already. Now, when I check my next bait, I'll probably put a little bit more in. I don't know how much to use because I'm very new with this product, but that's how we're using the sea goo today. Um, feel free to tell us I'm using it wrong. I probably am. I mean, I'm just a thick Geordie, really. But yeah, I'm gonna get that sent out there and hopefully. Pick up a fish on it. Right, so uh, we moved. There was nothing happening on that beach whatsoever. We couldn't hold bottom at all. We didn't think it was going to be a fair test lateral, to... La lateral pull. La right, there was a lot of lateral pull. We didn't think it was a fair test on the sea goo if we couldn't hold bottom. So Tom got his way when I won the pier, which is surprisingly empty. Fingers crossed it stays it's this way. Just before the bend. Right, three people just before the bend, so if you watch us on YouTube, hello! Um, but yeah, we're now on the pier, there's no pull. Uh, oh, we're going to get back to what we are doing before, but now it will all be handheld. It's quite a big ship leaving the dock. I think it's either a cable layer or something to do with putting the turbines out. We're getting quite a lot of turbines. There's a wind farm being built out just outside the mouth of the, the Blythe. It's massive. So that is a very big one. Remember when one came in and the sea was really choppy now he hit the pier? Yeah, that, that, that still had nightmares about that. I still got a twitchy bum now. It is. God, I bet you that's a fun job. Yeah. I would never get any work done. I'd have a fishing rod with us at all <laughs> times. So, unbelievably, ladies and gentle fish, we we'll actually have a fish on tonight, which has been appalling. Uh, Tom with a nice flounder. This one's weird because it's a double sided flounder. Do you want some oh, sort of? Sort of. But it's also coloured on its underbelly as well. I'll try and turn my head towards you as you can see. That's the first time I've seen that. I've never seen one like that before. Nah. 
Never seen one like that. Strange. But aye, that was on a uh, squid and was it squid and rag? Ragworm tip of squid, a squid head. Then a little dab of the sea goo on it. Yeah. I think it was the lugworm one that we're using. So this stuff apparently works. Right, get that one put back. So that's number two for Tom there. A uh, little dab on what was that on rag and squid again? No, it was a um, fresh lugworm with a squid tip, but it took the circle look at the top, so it just took the lugworm. So the fresh lugworm with the dab again. Yes, it had the crab. Crab, crab, sea goo on. So, that's two for the sea goo in my eyes. Fishy, fishy. At least it's not a blank. It's not a blank. Well, not for you. It is for me at the moment. You'll get one, you'll get one. I'll turn these around and give you an update in a little bit. So, well, that's a uh, two for Tom. Uh, I've had about 15 again. All not on camera. Uh, zero for me. But I like, yet again, I'd really like to thank my sponsors of Solon Seagoo and Sukuma for hooking up with some gear. Hooking what up, eh? Hey. Hooking what up, literally Sukuma, hooking what up, sent me a couple of packets of hooks and stuff like that. Uh, Seagoo sent me four bottles of Seagoo, and I'm strangely impressed with it. I've had a couple of baits out where I haven't put it on, and I haven't had a single bite or a knock or anything. On the few where I have put it on, I've at least had a rattle, and Tom's had two fish. So, it's still, it's still a bit early, so I would like to try it again on like a proper day for better conditions, better conditions where there's going to be some really good fishing around. But I uh, say we've got four bottles and I can't, the amount that we're using, I can't see we're going through four bottles very soon. Nah. Unless we'll have a day where it's like horrendous and we'll lose a rig every cast, which I am due by the way. Um, but yeah, so if, I'll put out what, low to medium fish activity now. Low. It's good low fish activity right now. I'll be blinking at the bottom of the screen where my hand is. Um, we're hoping it's going to pick up, but we're staying here till midnight or longer because I don't have a school run to do it tomorrow morning. <laughs> While I'm on, I'm going to say happy birthday to my little girl. She turns six. As you are watching that she's turned six, but it's tomorrow for me. Um, so yeah, happy birthday, Leah, from me and your Uncle Tom and all the YouTube folk. Well, yeah, we're going to keep cracking on with this and hopefully pull out another fish. So, ladies and gentle fish, does Solon Seagoo work? Well, that's three for three for Tom. Three fish, three chucks. Uh, I mean, I know there's nothing big the day, but I mean, this is what we're going to have to put up with. It's a weird, sick coloured dab. It's it's horrible colour. It's like diarrhea colour, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Can't really, the camera doesn't really justify on how... Yeah, you, can't, yeah, okay. you can't really see the colour properly, can no. you? No. But yeah, it's, it's a sick coloured dab, <laughs> which is ironic because that's what dab tastes like. Oh, so a poo fish. Aye. Uh, that's three for three, to for Tom. It's definitely a flatty bashing night. It is, I'm enjoying it. That's the way, Pop, I haven't had one yet. Yep. So I've got some, uh, is it lug flavour we've got this time? Louisiana lug robe. Louisiana lug robe. So get that in there and give it a good... Oh. As you can tell, Michael's very, very good at this because he's from Blythe. Yes, uh, it's kind of second nature. We'll learn how to use syringes not long after we we'll put the bottle down. Um, so yeah, for a bloke that's scared of needles, I'm actually doing alright with that one. Stankity stank. So we'll get this clipped up and uh, send it. Are you going to film the whole send, Tom? I might as well. You should not be able to do it this time because I'm on film. Come on people, pray for a bird's nest. Send it, ladies and gentle fish. Splash. No nest. No nest at all, I actually stopped it. Bloody hell. So that's uh, four for four now for Tom. Another little dab. It appears that it's got some hagfish damage on the bottom of it as well. Cannot really pick it up on camera because of all the. Ah, oh, there it is, you can just see it. You got it? Yeah, yeah, you can see it there. Nah, it looks like it's been hagfished. But it's another little dab. That's four, four casts, four fish. None for Mick, None but I'm going to move now. So, like I was saying, that's four for four. For t it's hard to say that, you know, with my accent. Four for four. It's four for four on Tom. Four fish, four casts. 
I've now moved to the other side of the town and I'm aiming for a spot which we call on here Flatty Hole which is where you go in the far corner and I chuck towards St Mary's Lighthouse uh, it's, it's a canny old chuck like to get to it but I think I've got the distance again That's where I normally pick my place up in the spring uh, You know in the spring we'll get you get place and decent flounders from there but I'm gonna give it a try how that's it because over here I was hitting some rough ground so there's, there's, I was aiming for the codling out there, they're obviously not there tonight so I'm going to try over on the cleaner ground and hope that I can at least pick up a flatty but we're not leaving until I get a fish even if we're here on Thursday and this episode's late we're not leaving until I get a fish That's Michael's first cast in flatty corner and he reckons he's into a fish Oh no! Go on, lad. That's why I felt like a good and I've got it to the side. Oh. Dab. To the side. First cast in flatty corner, eh? Michael hasn't. Well, technically, Michael has blanked, but he has a fish. It's a foul. It's barely a foul as it's well. A... Get that out there. Yeah. Little, little dab. Little poo dab. Yep. Almost see through. But, save the blank. Neck on me. You can shut that off now, actually, I'll put it on the... Right, so it looks like Tom's on to another one here. Uh, this will be our fifth fish since we've got here, is it? Fifth. Fifth fish since Tom's got here. Uh, I just had another thunderous bite, so I, I don't know how long this is going to be. I'm trying to film Tom and keep an eye on my rod here. See if we can get it in the water. I don't think we'll see it. Yeah, it's not flat. Of course, it's a flatty Michael. It's a better size one, this I think, though. Looks all right when I seen it in the water. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. Not a dab, though. Not a dab. Good bite that one gave. Yep. Is it an easy get off? Yes, yeah, just in, just in the mouth. That's not a bad dab, actually. That's a lovely dab. Shame it tastes like uh, a dab. Just taking the squid. Literally, that's all. That's, that's all I want, squid. So the squid's gone mental. Yeah. But yeah, lovely dab. Do you want to hold it up to the camera and look really happy and make it look like a ten pounder is normal whenever you hold a fish? No. <laughs> Good save. Right, let's get that one put back then, eh? Well, a little update for you. Tom's just missed a thunderous bite. Uh, he picked it up as it was biting, struck into it, and it wasn't there. I've had a good couple of, a few good rattling bites, and missed them. So, uh, yeah, it's got a bit iffy. We're still going to stick it out, like. But uh, my review on this silent, solent seagull so far, I really like it. I genuinely do believe that has been the difference maker of the night. But I'll go over it more at the end of the video on what we've done, how we've used it, and where I think it's benefited. So that's Tom on again. I've had another little rattle and bite. Hopefully this time Tom's connected. I definitely connected. Can't really tell what it is yet. Can you tell what it is yet? Actually we can't say that anymore, can we? I don't know if you're going to... Might just be a big flat. Big flat, I think. Yeah. Very big flat. Lovely sized flat. Not a dab. That's a big flat. It, that's a... That's a... That's wow. a big dab. That's pan size, that like. I'm gonna eat him. Oh, good luck to you. Good fish. Right, well, I'll let you get that off the hook and get it dispatched. Thank you very much. Right, so it looks like Tom's on. Looks like Tom's on to something decent here. Hopefully. Hopefully, it's not just a big crab. We we'll have had a few drop me off crabs. I've just lost a good one. Um, got my fingers crossed for you here. See it yet. Oh, we've got colour. It's codling. 
got around it. Eventually on the last cast looks like we're going to get a codlin. Lead or not got? Lead or not, yeah. I need a half more. Right, I'm going to have to put the camera down, folks. So we're back, folks. Um, it was a codlin. I don't think it looks keepable. No, he's going back. He's going back. Are you having one more truck or? I'm going to have to now, aren't I? We're going to have to have one more truck because I've just lost something cracking as well. There, uh, we'll get that one put sent straight back. There's the man who caught it. We've got to have you holding it as usual. The Thank traditional you. Tom holding a fish. There it is. Another codlin on the tally. We'll get a photo and truck. Michael's into another fish. If we can call it that. Another little sick coloured dab. Definitely the day for the dabs today, like. Day of the dab. So I'll get this one put back, I think. Yep. Well, that was a fun session. What do you think? I'm, I'm pleased we moved. It does go to show if you're not happy with the first mark, move. I was stupid. I, I would have stayed there all night, me. But yeah, it worked out. I think it was 10 fish between where? A surprise codlin. Which was a massive surprise. And a personal best. A personal best dab for Tom. Shame it was a poo dab, but it was still the biggest one I've ever caught. A personal smallest thing for me, because <laughs> everything was tiny I caught. <laughs> I at least it didn't blank, Michael. No, I didn't blank. Um, with a solid CU, very impressed. Yeah. Very impressed. I think that did make a bit of a difference for the day. We tried baits with it. We tried baits without it. We tried injecting it, we tried dipping it. Dipping it, injecting it, rubbing it on it. Um, Even sang a little song at one point. Did sing a little song. But yeah, uh, quality product that. We're going to leave a link to them in the description. Uh, we're going to leave a link to Sukuma in the description. Yet again, hooks were absolutely top quality. No, no issues with them whatsoever. Well, we've got a new company coming on board as well, which possibly next week, maybe it's the week after, called Baitmate. They make a baiting tool. And I've seen quite a few people using them. Um, I got in touch with him and he's going to sponsor the channel as well. So that's good. So yeah, Solon Sigu, thank you very much. Sukuma, thank you very much. Baitmate, soon to be thank you very much. And I might be working on a fourth if I can get me magic to happen. Greed. Greed, I. Uh, it's good. But yeah, um, remember, fan fish activity, keep them coming in. That'll be coming next. Uh, like, share, subscribe, follow on on Instagram at Rod and Pollock's Fishing, and uh, giveaway is getting drawn. Giveaway is getting drawn. Not next week, but the week after the giveaway will be getting drawn. So that's still open. So high fish activity on other videos. Uh, on that one, I think it's uh, tight lines, folks. Done. And I've got to steal it off that lad in the Facebook group. May the fish be with you. <laughs> <laughs>